Okay, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the cost of uh, building a PBN. Um, basically, um, there's multiple things and, and, and some of these are one-time costs and some of these are recurring costs. Uh, the, the first thing is your domain acquisition cost. Uh, that, so that's like if you, are you buying an expired domain or are you buying an auction domain? Are you buying a domain on Flipper? Is a friend selling you the domain? Um, you know, do you have some of these domains already lying with you? So, so that's your domain acquisition cost. Then we have a web hosting cost. Uh, I strongly, strongly recommend don't go for, don't try and cut cut corners here and go for like the cheap one dollar hosting providers because that's going to, because there are a lot of spam domains on these, um, on these cheap hosting providers, and uh, that's just going to, and the, and and what happens with that is when uh, the threshold of spam domains, uh, the percentage increases on that specific IP address. Um, that IP address starts becoming toxic. And once an IP address is toxic, then Google sort of uh, recognizes that and starts penalizing uh, the domains because it, it sort of hones in on them and, and, and realizes that, hey, this is a cheap IP address. There's a lot of spam on this IP address. So the people setting up uh, uh, hostings and websites on, on this particular IP are not that serious about their websites. So, so probably, there are some PBNs in here and just sites that are spam sites uh, because uh, people are cutting corner with this particular host uh, or this particular IP address. And that's how it's sort of you're leaving a footprint. So that's how Google sort of narrows down on you. Uh, I, I would recommend at least like, you know, $5 and upwards. And I'll give you a list uh, along with this course that uh, lists uh, a lot of these uh, decent hosting providers and you can uh, get hosting from them. Uh, you could pay upfront for the full year and probably save a couple of months uh, fees if you want. Or you could, uh, you know, wait around for Christmas time or Black Friday sales where you can get them really cheap if you pay for a year or if you lock in for uh, X amount of time. Um, you can probably get these hostings for, I mean, I've got some real, really, really good deals around that time, the Cyber Monday and Black Friday and Christmas time. Uh, you can get hosting for the entire year. I mean, you can like save as much as 75% a lot of the time, 50% to 75%, uh, sometimes even more. And uh, I did, I do, uh, The I remember the last time uh, I did purchase a bunch of hostings for the entire year and it just helps you because if you know you're going to be building out PBNs and using these uh, or doing any kind of web, uh, you know, web hosting, then <coughs> you understand what, what a deal is and, and you just want to go for it. So um you could go for the premium hostings also but there's no real requirement the high-end hosting like wp engine and sites like that unless your site has real high traffic your pbn site and that individual site and you are and it is a sort of a real site and not just a pbn and it is uh, of course it is passing down juice to the sites you link to but um, so there's not really any requirement to go for uh, premium hosting, but there is, uh, you know, the, the mid-range hosting providers and uh, you can access the uh, PDF for the accompanying ebook uh, with this course uh, or in the notes, I'll, I'll pass down the entire list. Uh, the other cost is your site setup, right? Like uh, who's going to be setting it up? If you're going to be outsourcing it to a VA, you're going to do it yourself. Then of course, that's your internal cost uh, of time. And uh, if you're going to be buying any specific uh, themes uh premium themes for this for the site i don't recommend that because there are a lot of uh, free themes out there that you can use um so i don't really recommend going out and just like purchasing like themes for like 50 bucks on graphic river or theme forest for these pbns because there's plenty of themes out there so if you're using wordpress then so then you have the set up time to design and customize the look and feel of your pbn site so it looks real that's going to cost you and uh, and then there's a cost and then if you're going to be adding some plugins i don't think you need any premium plugins at all you won't need any but uh you know just the basic ones and we'll talk about uh, which ones are essential um you know the backup plugins and the anti-spam and then setting up things like analytics and uh, you know things like that just to make sure that uh, <coughs> your site is set up uh, the basic things are set up uh, and then there's content, uh, and that's the initial content. And that depends on, are you repurposing? There are two things here. Are you going to be 
repurposing your site or are you going to be resurrecting a site that uh, <coughs> that existed in the past i mean from the uh, from the history i mean you look at way back um, way back uh, arc, uh, way back uh, way back machine and you um, sort of get a snapshot of the content what it looked like in what it did look like in the past and you sort of use the entire same structure and uh, you know and create a site uh, to mirror what it was in the past of course there are tools you can use to do that uh, like uh, way back uh, downloader and there's a few others which i'll talk about in when i uh, sort of go through setting up the site step by step and that will help you like uh, spider all the content uh, quickly from the archives and uh, <coughs> uh, create these static uh, pages and then uh, you can upload it to your uh, uh, to your website and they did mirror the you don't really need to install WordPress if you're going to be doing that if you're going to be using this method because it will create static pages but Google has no way of knowing whether it's a static page or if it's uh, um, if it's a WordPress dy dynamic WordPress and I want to check on double check on that so I'm not going to commit to that but from what I'm aware Google can't recognize because the page is served by the server after executing so uh okay so that's when you resurrect a site which you know and site with the old content and another way to res uh, resurrect it like page for page you could resurrect it also by recreating the same content on a wordpress instance so you you actually go there and you sort of use you're passing down um, a, a, a sort of a message to google that you know i'm i'm upgrading my site and i'm installing the new cms or I'm putting a new theme and things like that and but the content is the same and maybe I add a few more pages so that you can you can do that as well and then there's uh, the other method which is uh, repurposing it that means you're changing the entire content so you're going to be uh, sort of um, adding entirely new pages and everything and you're going to be you'll have to 301 the old pages the URLs to uh, corresponding uh, <laughs> the new pages that you put up or to the home page but make sure you don't 301 too many of them to the home page because then that sort of raises a footprint flag uh, okay so that's your setup fees uh, your setup content and then we have the ongoing content and ongoing content is basically um, it depends on how powerful your domain is uh, the ex uh, the pbn site is uh, what its purpose is I mean you know do you want to update content once a month add a new post or just update it once a week maybe more frequently or maybe once in two months if it uh, doesn't really require any updating and if it's not you know if it's not powerful enough or if it's not relevant enough it's not an important like uh, pbn site for you and it's not doing it's doing something for you it's doing pushing some juice out to your money sites but it's not really uh, something that you want to spend any money uh, and ongoing fees to um, maintain the content and update it so uh, that's that's another cost um, then you have backlinks like some of these domains you may want to like build their authority up for specific pages that you create or some of the old pages that you uh, resurrect uh, you may want to pass additional backlinks to them so they get more powered up and the site also looks real like Google sort of gets a signal that hey this site this pbn site is you know this particular site is not a pbn site because google doesn't know it's a pbn site so this particular site is getting some activity happening from around there it is getting some mentions and things like that so sort of mixes it up and doesn't leave uh, it sort of negates some of the footprints that you could leave behind so you could build backlinks or you could not build any backlinks and uh, it all depends on the power of the PBN site and what your uh, goals are for that particular site. Okay, and then there's social profiles. So sometimes uh, some of these domains that you buy may already have existing social profiles and you'll have to try and re uh, sort of recover them uh, by doing forgot password and hopefully hope that the, that the email address that was... Uh, uh, used for these social provides uh, social profiles is um, a domain specific email address and then you can set up a catch-all account in the email and then you can sort of monitor for the the forgot password but of course this is uh, if if they've not um, you know if they've used other uh, email addresses while setting up the non-domain specific email addresses 
while setting up the social profiles and there's no way you can actually you know recover the um, recover the social accounts unless you you're buying the domain from like flipper or from someone you know or from you know you already own the domain uh, then you could sort of revive the social profiles otherwise uh, you can just go ahead and set up new social profiles for these for each pbn site and just to make things look real so yeah so that's another cost and then your network management fees that's like the ongoing like if you have a va and you are sort of um, they're managing your domain or you're managing it yourself in house and yeah if you have a va you got to pass strict instructions making sure you tell them not to leave any footprints uh, by using their browsers especially when your pbn sort of increases in size your then your pbn your network increases because then it becomes easy you know more and more critical a few sites it doesn't matter and if you're splitting it across different vas uh network management fees could be like if you have something like cms commander to sort of manage and i'll talk about this in detail later to manage all your pbns or you have some other plugin but you need to be really careful not to leave any footprints again but yeah so that's what network management is basically making sure that everything is running smooth none of your sites are down uh, maintaining nice clean spreadsheets which are private excel spreadsheets locally on you know um, your local machine or dropbox and try not putting these up in you know google docs you could of course if you have a few sites but why take a chance uh, i don't think google would like the separate companies right the the search as uh, and the email but uh, in their google drive but why take a, ch a chance here and risk it so so I, I would suggest just keeping it private and um, not uh, exposing your uh, your entire network, uh, the list of all your sites in the entire network in any one particular third party service provider um, and uh, just keep it private. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to the next video.